Alright guys, today we're going to start with the Enlightenment, and as you guys are aware, we're going to start with the vocabulary for it. Just to get us started, we're going to do some root words. Um, as you'll see, we're going to do this two or three times throughout this video, so just buckle in. Um, to get us started, we have phil, philo, phila, and phile, from the Greek meaning love. Uh, a couple of example, examples, philanthropist, Philadelphia, pedophile, audiophile. Bibliophile. As you can see, um, all of those res have the word love in them in some way, shape, or form. And then, so from the Greek meaning wisdom, uh, examples are sophisticated and sophomore. Uh, the very first word is philosopher. Um, as you can see in the picture, there's a picture of the statue uh, thinking man. A thinker who uses logic and reason to investigate the nature of the universe, human society, and mortality. Uh, throughout this unit, we're going to talk a lot about many different philosophers. Um, next up is the Ptolemaic system. Earth is motionless and at the center of the universe with all heavenly bodies revolving around it. Uh, this is, at this time with the Enlightenment, we're going to start making the scientific discoveries that prove that Earth is not the center of the universe. But as you guys are aware, I'm sure, before that, people believe that Earth was the center. Uh, once again, going with some more root words, we have geo, from the Greek meaning earth, ground, or soil. Helio, from the Greek meaning sun, and century and centro, from the Greek meaning center. Uh, and you can see the examples that go along with each of those right there. Uh, geocentric, earth-centered earth model of the universe, synonymous with the Ptolemaic system. So the Ptolemaic system was a very geocentric idea. Heliocentric is the opposite. The sun-centered model of the universe pr proposed by Copernicus, who argued that the Earth and planets revolved around the sun. Universal law of gravitation proposed by Isaac Newton, the idea that every object in the universe is attracted to every other object by a force called gravity. Rationalism, belief that reason is the chief source of knowledge. Scientific method, a logical procedure for gathering information about the natural world in which experimentation and observation are used to test hypotheses. Now, just a real quick side note before we move on. I know some of these are long. Um, do your best to summarize. Do not, you don't have to write down every word. Just get a nice summary going for each of them. Uh, moving on, though, to philosophy. It is French for philosopher, applied to all intellectuals during the Enlightenment. Writers, professors, journalists, economists, and social reformers are all going to be known as the philosophy separation of powers. We're going to start getting into politics and some government building. In uh, this case, it's a form of government in which the executive, legislative, and judicial branches limit and control each other through a system of checks and balances. For all you people who took United States history or government, this system should, should sound pretty familiar to you. Uh, checks and balances, once again, they should sound pretty familiar coming from previous history classes. Uh, it's a system in which each branch of government is able to limit the power of the other branches. Exactly the same kind of system we have set up here in the United States. Uh, last time, I believe, with the fun with roots, we have day from the Greek meaning God. Uh, example is deity and deify. Uh, deism is the next vocabulary word. Uh, 18th century religious philosophy based on reason and natural law. Believe supreme being created the universe, but does not interfere with human affairs. So pretty much that God created the universe and everything in it. However, he does not come down to earth and actually interact with us. He just kind of lets us be uh, on our own and make our mistakes and grow as we need to. Uh, Laissez-faire, once again, you might have heard this if you had a previous history class, uh, but it's French for let do idea that government should not interfere with or regulate business industry or the economy so essentially you just let businesses do what they need to do and they'll take care of themselves social contract an agreement between people and their government by which individual rights are limited in return for peace security and order provided by the government so pretty much the government's going to protect the people and in return the government is going to limit essentially the rights of the individuals to kind of keep that piece of securities there. Uh, salon gathering in which intellectual and political ideas were exchanged during enlightenment. So pretty much you'd have people standing around or sitting around and having a couple of drinks, eating, and just kind of chit-chatting, talking about the ideas that are spreading during this time. 
um, this is the main way that ideas are spread. People didn't really write this stuff down. They kind of just talked about it, discussed it, and debated it amongst themselves in these salons. Enlightened absolutism, a system in which rulers tried to govern by enlightenment principles while maintaining their full royal power. So as I'm sure you can imagine, most royalty did not want to give up their power or, or rights. They decided that they wanted to try and adapt their power to these new enlightenment ideas to kind of get, catch on the bandwagon because this enlightenment idea was an absolutely popular idea and they did not want to lose their power by having the peasants revolt against them. They wanted to show the people that they could change, that they could and adapt to the times. Alright guys, and as you can see with the lesson ticket, we're going to do this in class tomorrow, so you don't have to worry about doing it right now. If you want to, go ahead, but you don't have to. We're going to do it tomorrow.